flowering plants, or angiosperms, make up a huge part of life on Earth. They have many forms, flowering trees, herbs, shrubs, grasses, aquatic plants, and bulbs are all angiosperms. Most life today is dependent on flowering plants. Humans are no exception. Angiosperms shape our ecosystems. They make up the majority of our crop plants and they absorb CO2 from the atmosphere. Despite their importance, flowering plants came about recently in terms of evolutionary time. They first appear clearly in the fossil record during the early Cretaceous period, about 130 to 140 million years ago. During the mid-Cretaceous, flowering plants increased dramatically. Today, they dominate the plant world, representing around 90% of living plant species. They are also more diverse than other plants and can live nearly anywhere. Forests, grasslands, deserts, coastal regions, and even oceans and freshwater habitats are full of angiosperms. But what is it that makes angiosperms so successful? And why did they diversify so quickly? Angiosperms developed a relationship with animal pollinators that is unique in the plant world. The first flowers were pollinated by insects. Early beetles and flies fed on ancient plant tissue. They happened to spread pollen around, which helped plants reproduce. Insect pollination gave flowers a huge advantage. Angiosperms took off. Traits that attracted insects became more common, and a burst of new species occurred. Insects also diversified in response to the new flower traits. By the mid-Cretaceous, insects specialized for pollination show up in the fossil record. The special relationship between flowering plants and pollinators persisted over time. It led to incredible diversity for both groups. Fly and beetle pollinators are still around, but now other insects like bees, butterflies, and moths do the job as well. Joining them are mammals, such as bats, as well as several types of birds. There are even a few lizards in the mix. Because of their shared evolutionary history, certain flowers and pollinators favor one another. Often, flower anatomy matches pollinator anatomy, and other flower traits match pollinator foraging preferences. They match so well that the traits of a flower often reveal how it's pollinated. This helps conservation biologists predict which flower and pollinator species are most vital for maintaining an ecosystem. It's an important balance. Today, there are roughly 350,000 species of flowering plants, and nearly 90% of pollination is the work of insects and other animals. This includes pollination of many agricultural plants. In fact, animals pollinate about 75% of the crops grown worldwide, including those used for food, beverages, fiber, spices, and medicine. Without pollinators, crop yields decrease. In almonds, taking away pollinators hurts yield much more than depriving trees of water and fertilizer. Angiosperms have dramatically changed the planet, promoting diversity and supporting much of the life that exists today.